If you're looking for one of these all-in-one solar generators to use when you're out in the field and you want one that's packed with lots of power but won't break the bank, you're going to want to stay tuned to this video because I'm going to introduce you to this new entry from EBL called the Voyager 1000. A few months ago, a company called EBL reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to do a review on one of their solar generators. Now, I never heard of the EBL before, but I did some homework and found out that they've been around since the 90s making batteries, little batteries like AA, AAA, rechargeable batteries, alkaline, NICAD, battery chargers, and so forth. And I guess recently they decided to get into the lucrative field of solar generators and they have two different products. They have this 999 watt hour version they call the Voyager 1000 and they also have a 330 watt version. So after doing some background research I decided that it would be worth testing this one out. What especially intrigued me about this one is the price. Typically you're going to pay close to a thousand dollars for a thousand watt hour solar generator. If you look on Amazon, you'll see this listed at $899.99, but with the $400 off coupon, that brings the price down to $499.99, which is just 50 cents per watt hour, which is a fantastic price for a thousand watt hour generator. So that's why I agreed to let them ship this product to me and began testing it at home four months ago running my equipment in my backyard observatory and also doing this the basic tests that I always do such as capacity tests and recharge time tests as well. So let's go over the basic features of the Voyager 1000. Obviously it supplies DC power. In this case it has three power ports, one cigarette lighter plug and two 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter ports which is very convenient for astronomers since that's the uh, pretty much the standard on most astronomy gear. The max current capacity out of any one of these or all three to co combined is 8 amps. Like most solar generators they have a pure sine wave AC inverter to supply 110 volts and they have two outputs for that. They also have a bunch of USB ports. They have three USB A 3.0 quick charge ports that each can supply 18 watts of power. They have a power delivery port which supplies 60 watts. And then on top they have a wireless charger which is a 10 watt charging capacity. They also have a built-in MPPT solar charge controller and the inputs to that are an 8 millimeter plug and Anderson power pole plugs. As you can see they have this nice convenient and very sturdy carrying handle which I like that it folds down flat. You can see the design of this thing is basically a nice little rectangle. You can stack things on top of it when you're putting your gear in your car or your van for travel. They have rubberized bumpers on either side so that when you inevitably bang this into something, it's not likely to crack any of the ABS plastic. They have a white light on the front, which is useful for basic camping, but not so much for us astronomy folks. They have an LCD display on the front, which will show you the state of charge and percent of capacity. It will also show you how much power you're using when you're discharging and it will show you how much power you're inputting when you're charging. There are on off power switches here, a main power switch, then a separate power switch for DC, USB and AC. And one other interesting thing on the bottom they list all the specs of this model and it also has some rubberized feet on all of the corners. Overall, the entire package weighs 18.7 pounds, so it's fairly lightweight for its capacity. The dimensions are fairly compact. It's 15.7 inches by 10.3 by 10.8 inches, 
So this packs the equivalent energy in a lighter weight package than the Jackery 1000. Like most solar generators on the market, this one also uses lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, not lithium iron phosphate. This Voyager model comes with a 12 month warranty. And while they don't specify the number of full discharge cycles, one would expect since it's lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide or NMC, that it would be 500 or greater full discharge cycles, which is typical of that particular chemistry. So the Voyager comes with a number of accessories, pretty standard in the industry to have an AC wall charger, which connects to the DC eight millimeter in plug. And it's also pretty standard to have a cigarette lighter plug um, charge cable, which can be used to charge from your car. And then an MC4 charging cable as well. One are the MC4 connectors to the DC um, eight millimeter plug. That way you would charge from a solar panel that has MC4 connectors. The other thing to note about charging, typical for these solar generators, you can do pass-through charging, which means that you can have this hooked up to AC or say I'm out here in the field with a solar panel. While I'm charging it, I could actually be drawing power from it. I could be uh, using USB ports to recharge my phone or laptop, or I could be running my um, computer with the AC or the DC outputs as well. So that's called pass-through charging. If you've watched any of my other power source uh, reviews, you know that before I even begin using the power source to power my equipment, I do a number of bench level tests. So the first test I do when reviewing any power supply is to verify the maximum current on the DC outputs. Now this EBL model has a cigarette lighter plug and two 5.5 by 2.5 DC output connections. And they're all rated at eight amps. So I'm gonna use this dummy load and crank up the current to see if uh, it will support the eight amps that they claim. I'm connected to the cigarette lighter uh, plug output port. Turn on the power here and turn on the DC power here and let's you can see I've got power there and it's reading 12.9 volts which is what I would expect okay there's eight I'll hold it there for a minute or so so it seems pretty steady at eight amps let's see where it cuts out we're at nine amps now the manufacturer specs this at eight amps so you really shouldn't expect to run it higher than eight amps ten and a half amps still hasn't cut out that's pretty good so you can safely assume that you're gonna get your eight amps that they promise you. So we're connected to one of the 5.5 by 2.5 DC plugs. And let's check the current on that. And you can see that it's holding steady at eight. All right, let's see if we can go higher. So you can see this also can handle more than eight, but again, it's specced at eight, so it's not recommended to drive higher than eight amps of current. So we verified that the DC outputs do supply eight amps. So now let's check the maximum capacity that you can get out of this power supply. The manufacturer rates it at 999 watt hours. So I will run this continuously off the cigarette lighter port at the eight amps, use my dummy load, which will record the voltage, the current, the amp hours and the watt hours and the time okay 8.04 and 12.3 volts and we'll let this run and i'll watch it periodically and record the voltage versus time to see when the voltage starts dropping down so the meter is indicating 50 percent just dropped down to 49 percent we've used 45.3 amp hours and 564.5 watt hours so we'll keep this running till it shuts down okay so we're now down to about one percent left on the state of charge it just went to zero and cut off so the voyager bms has shut down the output you see zero volts 0.01 amp which is basically nothing 
zero watts, 72.7 amp hours is the final tally, 898.7 watt hours. And it took roughly nine hours to fully discharge. EBL specs this at 999 watt hours. And my three measurements came in extremely close to one another, averaging at 917 watt hours. So that's about 92% of the specification, which isn't bad. Sometimes these solar generators give a little more, sometimes they give a little less. Part of that is due to the BMS inside consuming some of the power as well, which is why you don't always get the full capacity. And if we take a look at the voltage versus state of charge as it varies over time, we see that the output voltage is 12.45 plus or minus about 0.1 volt over the entirety of the state of charge until it gets down to under 1%, at which case it drops to zero because the BMS has cut it off. The um, next test that I did was a full recharge test from zero capacity to 100% capacity. Now they spec eight to 12 hours, depending on how you do this. So I first used the AC charger and both times I did a full capacity recharge, I got 7.7 .7 hours on the dot each time. So that was very repeatable and that's a perfectly reasonable recharge time. I also did a solar recharge test using two of EBL's 100 watt solar panels. And in that case, it took 7.7 .7 hours to fully recharge from zero to 100%. Now I will point out something is the charger is limited to 150 watt max, which is the output capacity of that AC charger. So two 100 watt panels, if they were working at uh, perfect efficiency would be 200 watts. Um, it wouldn't be able to use all that, but frankly, you never really get the full capacity out of a solar panel. So two 100 watt panels uh, would be perfectly fine to recharge this as fast as possible. The other thing that I did was check the efficiency of the inverter. So when you're out in the field, you wanna be as efficient with the capacity of your power source as possible. And using an inverter is uh, not the most efficient uh, use of the energy inside of these things. I tested the efficiency of this particular inverter and I found it to be 93% efficient converting the DC power from the lithium cells inside to a usable AC power, which is actually very good. One other thing to point out about the DC outputs is these are regulated, DC regulated outputs. At 8 amps, you would typically see a voltage about 12.4 volts. I'm here at the Nightfall Star Party in the Southern California desert town of Borrego Springs to do the final field testing of the EBL Voyager 1000. Now I've had this operating in my home observatory for several months now. On this trip, I have the EBL 1000 powering my telescope setup, which includes my mount, my cameras, uh, my mini PC, and all assorted accessories that go with a typical astronomy setup. And the objective is to see just how long the EBL 1000 will power everything before I need to recharge it. Over the last few nights, I imaged for a total of just under 24 hours using the EBL Voyager 1000. Now your setup may be different than mine. Mine is a software BIS Mighty Mount. I'm using uncooled camera from ASI, ASI 1600, and a guide camera. I'm using a mini PC with a wireless router and a Pegasus Powerbox power distribution hub and USB hub. So I use a total of about 38 watts. Now to put this into perspective for you, if you're using something like a mini PC, Intel Nuke, Raspberry Pi, something like the Stellar Mate or ASI Air, and you're using uncooled cameras, you're probably running 30 watts or less. And in that case, you can expect to go for at least 30 hours. Now, if instead you are using a cooled camera, and maybe you have to turn on the dew heater, you could be pushing close to 60 watts, which would drop your usable time down to about 15 hours. So that would be two evenings of seven, seven and a half hours or one very long night before you need to recharge. If on the other hand, 
you're using a 15 and a quarter inch laptop instead of something like a mini PC, you could be pushing 90 to even 120 watts total power consumption, depending on whether you turn the screen off or not, in which case that would drop you down to maybe under eight hours. So maybe one night of imaging with this before you need to recharge. So having used this Voyager 1000 solar generator from EBL over the last four months, and especially over the last few nights here at this star party, I've been very pleased with its performance. I really like the fact that this is a nice compact design. It's a very solidly built case. All the uh, features that we need to access are right on the front panel. The handle is great. I like this a lot better than some of the models that have a molded in fixed handle because you can push this out of the way as well. And if you're looking for a solar generator in the field, you really can't beat something like this if you get this at the price of $499.99 with that coupon. I mean, nothing else seems to come close to that. Now, I'll put links to this solar generator and the solar panels that they also sell down below the video. If you found this video useful, please like the video. And if you want to see more of my videos, you can subscribe to this channel. And if you're interested in other aspects of astronomy, other types of equipment reviews, how-tos, and so forth, you can visit my website, californiaskies.com. So thank you for watching.